Thank you for purchasing the Banks Ram Air intake system for your 2017 to 2019 6.6 .6 Duramax turbo diesel. Installation is a snap and can be handled with some basic hand tools, including a quarter inch or three eighths drive ratchet with metric sockets, standard and Phillips head screwdrivers, get some clean shop towels or rags, an eight millimeter or five sixteenths nut driver, and a T20 Torx screwdriver. Since we'll be disconnecting the MAF sensor on your intake tube, it's best to disconnect the negative terminal on both batteries. This will prevent us from throwing any codes during the operation. Let's start by using an 8mm socket on your ratchet driver to loosen the hose clamps on the intermediate tube on your stock intake. Once they're both loose, you'll wiggle this section and dislodge it. The next step is to remove the MAF sensor from the stock intake. You'll notice a red safety clip. This is holding down the button. It will prevent you from removing the sensor until you've pulled this red clip up towards you, just a hair. Then you'll be able to depress the button with your finger and then pull the MAF sensor out from the tube. Now let's take a pair of snips and cut the zip tie holding down the MAF sensor wires and a coolant line. We'll need to move both of these out of the way. Surprisingly, the stock airbox is not bolted down. With a little bit of wiggling, it will pop out of its nest. And although it's a little tight, we assure you it will come out. Beneath the airbox, you'll find a metal plate with a big hole in it. This plate is held in place by four bolts. Remove these bolts and keep them handy. You'll be reusing these on the new intake. The plate, however, you can set off to the side. You will not need it. If you forget this step of removing the plate, your new intake will not fit right. Now using the Torx T20 screwdriver, remove the MAF sensor from the stock airbox. Find the new stainless steel Phillips screws included in the bank's intake package and install the MAF sensor on the bank's intake tube. And though we don't call for it in the installation manual, you can use some blue Loctite to keep these secure, if you choose. Now it's time to install the two rubber edge pieces, one on the top and one on the fender side. If you're in a cold climate, you might want to try a hair dryer or some other safe heat source to make these a little more pliable. Be careful not to melt them. Once you've worked your way all the way around, then trim the extra and butt the seams together. Once the grommets are in, let's take the new bank's airbox and drop it into place. Make sure to move any cables or coolant lines out of the way. Once you've made sure that the four holes in the airbox line up with the four stock bolt locations, grab those four stock bolts and tighten down the airbox. The holes should line up very accurately, but if they don't, place one in first and then rotate the box just slightly to maneuver the other bolts into location. Now let's remove the stock resonator. This is the part that makes your intake quiet. Let's get rid of it. Using a ratchet and socket, let's remove the bolt. Loosen the hose clamp and wiggle it free. After loosening both hose clamps on the stock resonator coupling, let's pull it free. It might take a little wiggling, but it will pop right off. After sliding the new Banks tube into the filter and tightening down the hose clamp, it's time to attach the coupling hose to the tube. You'll notice a lip all the way around. The edge of the hose must touch this lip all the way around and not go over it. 
If you push the coupling hose too far onto the tube, it will prevent the hose clamp from seating properly. Again, make sure that the hose seats against this edge all the way around, then slide the hose clamp on. The hose clamp should sit about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the hose all the way around. It should not be at an angle. Now don't tighten down the hose clamp all the way just yet. You want to leave it loose enough so that you can rotate the coupling hose once it's on the truck for the perfect fit on both the intake tube and the turbo inlet. Now insert the intake tube into the filter. There's a ridge inside the filter that prevents the tube from going too far. Slide on the hose clamp and tighten it down completely. Now with the intake tube and filter securely attached to one another, slide the filter into the airbox. The filter should come to rest about one inch inside the edge of the airbox. Rotate the intake tube toward the turbo inlet. Slide on the second hose clamp. Using both hands, wiggle the coupling tube snugly onto the turbo inlet, making sure the edge of the coupling tube stops against the edge of the turbo inlet. Despite the white printed arrow on the coupling tube, it may be necessary to rotate the coupler just to the left or to the right to make sure it seats perfectly with both the intake tube and the turbo inlet. Once you're satisfied that the edge of the coupling tube is mated with the turbo inlet all the way around, then it's time to tighten down the final hose clamp. Will it come off? With both hands, grab the intake tube and yank on it. If it doesn't come off, you did a good job. Now it's time to plug the MAF sensor back in. Failure to do this will result in a very strangely running truck. Reconnect the negative terminal on both batteries and you are done. Get in your truck and enjoy your new Banks Ram Air cold air intake.